Section 6.4, the slope-intercept form of the equation for a linear function. Now we've worked with the slope-intercept form of the equation already. We just haven't called it that. It is your standard y equals mx plus b. We've worked with these parts in the previous chapter. So just as a reminder, x is my independent variable, y is my dependent variable, We've got m, which is our slope, and b, which is our starting point, or our y-intercept. We can look at this graph up here, and we can see all of these things. Our slope, remember you can draw that triangle to get your slope, and our y-intercept is this point right here where it crosses the y-axis. And here, we're given the parts of the equation that we need and they're asked to write the equation for it. So, basic general form of the equation is y equals mx plus b. I've been given my slope, that's my m, and my y-intercept, which is my b. I'm going to write these off to the side just so I've always got them straight. m equals 3 fifths, and b equals minus 4. So if I go to put them in the equation, now remember, we're looking at an equation. X and Y are variables that are going to stay as variable. So Y equals, now instead of the M, I'm going to put in my 3 fifths. And then I've got the X from the general form of the equation. That is That X is always there. And then instead of our B, we're going to put in the minus 4. There is my equation in slope-intercept form. Let's run through that one more time. Remember, we're putting into slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. If I look at my question, I've got a slope of negative 7 thirds and a y-intercept of 5. So that is m equals negative 7 thirds and b equals 5. Put that into the equation. Now remember, an equation of a linear function is always going to have an independent and dependent variable, so that x and y are going to say the same. Instead of m, we're going to put in negative 7 thirds. That x is still there from the equation. Instead of that b, we're going to put in a plus 5. There's my answer in slope-intercept form. Here's a little different question. Now we've been given the equation. y equals 1 half x plus 3. And it's asking us to graph that equation. Well, let's go through that equation and, and see what parts have we been given. Remember, our general form is y equals mx plus b. So this piece in front of the x must be our slope. Not the x, just the piece in front of it. m equals 1 half. And this piece over here, sign included, must be our b. We've got our slope, we've got our starting point. So if I'm going to draw this line, I will start with my b, because that's my starting point. That's why I like thinking about it that way. You have to remember, this is your x-axis, that's your y-axis, and this is your y-intercept. So it crosses my y-axis at 3. 1, 2, 3, right there. That's my y-intercept. My slope... You also have to remember the slope equals rise over run. So it's got a rise of 1 and a run of 2. Rise of 1, run of 2. Rise of 1, run of 2. Rise of 1, run of 2. And I can keep going until I run out of grid paper. Rise of 1, run out of 2. Once you put a few on there, don't just put one, but a few to make sure you haven't made a mistake. I can measure that with a ruler. I can draw my line with a ruler. And yes, draw your lines with a ruler. Put an arrow on each end. There's my linear equation. It's got my y-intercept or my starting point of 3, 3 up on the y-axis, and it's got my slope. Let's do another one of these y equals mx 
plus b is our general form. So I've got a couple of parts. I've got my m and whatever is whatever's in front of the x, sign included, and I've got my b. m equals negative three quarters. Notice I put the negative on the top number. I just find it easier if you slide it up to the top number. My b equals plus two. These are my x and y coordinates. Always start with your b value. So b is going to be plus two. I'll put it right there. And then when I look at my slope, that is rise over run. That means for every, every point, it's going to go down three over four. Down three over four. That's my next point. Down three over four. That's minus three. That's a four. That's a minus three. That's a four. I've now got enough points to draw my line. Pull out my ruler. There is my linear function. Next question. Write the equation of a linear function if you've been given its graph. I've got this graph, and that graph has enough information for me to write that linear equation. Remember, y equals mx plus b. It's a good idea to get into the habit of writing that down every time you start a question. Just ingrains it in your memory. So we're going to start with the starting point, and that's where it crosses the y-axis, and that's this point right here at minus 4. So I'm going to write that down. b equals minus 4. Next thing I'm going to look at is the slope. I'm going to find two points where the graph touches the grid perfectly, a spot right there, and a spot right there. So that goes down and then over. We've got a rise of minus 3 and a run of 2. My m equals rise over run. m equals minus 3 over 2. I've now got enough, enough information to put it into our equation. y equals, and instead of that m, I'm going to put in negative 3 over 2. x has to be in our equation. Instead of that b, I'm going to put in that minus 4. There's my equation drawn from the graph. Let's do one more. Our basic form is y equals mx plus b. I need to fill in the m and the b, so let's look at our graph. Starting with the b, it happens to cross right there at negative 3. m, which is going to be rise over run. Find two spots that it hits perfectly. I like that one and that one. It hits the grid perfectly. I've got a rise of 2, run of 1. Two and one. In this case, m equals two over one. Now remember, when we're writing a fraction, it has to be in simplest terms. This one already is. And if I have a one on the bottom, I don't need to write it in. If I write it in, it's not wrong, but it's it's wasting a little bit of time. So in this case, my slope equals two. Let's write it into the equation. Y equals Instead of the m, I'm going to put in 2x. And instead of the b, I'm going to put in minus 3. There is my equation in slope-intercept form.